Beatrice Jacinto Ventura.
Take this opportunity to congratulate our soon-to-be new 44 citizens of the United States of America. Congratulations. Please pray with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for so many blessings. Father, we thank you for our country, our families, and we thank you for loving us. Father, as we gather here today on this special occasion, we ask your blessings on the men and women of our armed forces serving around the world in freedom's cause. For our police officers, for our firefighters, for our emergency medical service first responders, and all those who serve in harm's way to keep us safe. Father, we ask your blessings on our president, our members of Congress, our governors and all the members of the legislatures, our county executive and members of the county board, our town supervisors, village mayors, and all of their staff members. Father, today we ask that you give them the wisdom to do what is right. And Father, please give them the courage to always stand up for what's right and to do your will. Father, today we come before you in this historic courthouse as one nation under God, to welcome our new citizens to the United States of America, right here in Putnam County. Father, we ask that you not only bless them and their families, but Father, we ask that you use this occasion as a reminder to all of us whose birthright gave us this citizenship, to renew our support for our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, and our governing document, the Constitution of the United States of America. Father, we ask and we pray that you will please help these new citizens of the United States of America carry the torch of freedom, hope, and justice, so that our great country will continue to be the beacon of freedom, hope, and justice throughout the entire world. Father, as these new citizens take the road today, let us all be mindful and ask the blessings on all those who knew that freedom wasn't free and marched to the sound of the guns in freedom's cause. Father, we ask that you help us be a blessing to other people in everything that we do. And all this we ask in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. May God bless our new citizens. May God bless their families. May God bless you all. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Very much. Thank you. County Executive Bill, can you say a few words, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Please be seated. Very well, you say that. <laughs> it's really an honor and privilege today to deliver the welcoming remarks. Uh, I'd like to thank our sheriff for those very inspirational words and very thoughtful words. I'd like to thank His Honor James Reese for presiding over today's ceremony, but particularly. A uh, very warm thank you and gratitude to our county clerk, Mr. Mike Barlotti, and his deputy county clerk, uh, Jimmy McConnell. So today, I, um, I find myself thinking about how lucky you all are, not only to be American citizens, that's, that's a given for today, but to be able to experience this. For those of us who were fortunate enough to be born in this country, a lot of us have maybe taken it for granted. So these moments, these historic moments here in this historic courthouse, which these walls have seen many, many wonderful, many trying things, all speaking to democracy right here in these walls, I hope you all will take away with you the fact that Putnam County represents probably, uh, as our sheriff says, the true beacon of freedom, hope, and justice. And today here, you've seen the colors presented. Putnam County is very proud of our veterans. We're very proud of our first responders. We're very proud to be the heart of the Hudson Valley. We're very, very proud to represent the Constitution of the United States every single day as elected officials and as citizens. So I welcome you all today in the words of John F. Kennedy, my fellow Americans. We welcome you all. Today is your day. This is your country. 
I hope that you all will live in hope and freedom as we all have enjoyed. Thank you very much, and uh, Your Honor.
I saw them at George's this morning. <coughs> I wonder why you're so happy then, having a great conversation, enjoying, waiting for today, this moment. Congratulations, everyone. Unbelievable. Now, as to the Pledge of Allegiance, Carl Rowley, can I ask you a favor? Sure. Are you able to come up here now? Yes. Can you have a pledge? Oh, yeah. Please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And congratulations to all the new citizens. Um, welcome to be an American citizen. Um, I'm uh, the son of an immigrant. My father came here during 1927, and I don't ever thought that I would be leading other new, ci new citizens in the pledge. Uh, this is the fourth time um, our county clerk has invited me to uh, be here to lead new citizens in their first pledge. And I can think of no more singular honor than to lead new citizens in the Pledge of Allegiance for the first time in American city. So please all rise. Please everybody should join us in the pledge. Please face the flag of our nation and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, God bless you, Now, for the recognition of the Spanish Spangled Banner, it's the manager of the 11th grader here at Carmel High School. Would you help us out? Mexico. Guatemala. Guatemala. Peru. Peru. 
Um, once I kind of got used to the idea that this was necessary, I said to the doctor, okay, let's schedule it. Let's, let's do a liver transplant. And the doctor said to me, you have to wait. And that's when I learned about the waiting list. And I was put on a waiting list because I learned that there was such a shortage in, liver, in livers and in other organs that the, only the sickest people were getting the transplant. And I had to wait until I was sick enough to be the next person online on that waiting list. Now you think about that. If you were diagnosed with cancer, would your doctor say to you, well, you have cancer, we have chemo, we have surgery, but you have to wait until you're really sick because we have a shortage of medication. That would never stand. It would never happen. But it does happen in transplant medicine every single day. So I, was, I learned about the waiting list. I was put on the waiting list. And I waited for 13 years for a transplant. 13 years. I was always coming up on the list, but I was never sick enough. There was always somebody sicker than me. Um, and so I waited, and I waited. And I tried to go on with my life. I was the mother of three children. And I had a full-time job that I loved. I worked in healthcare. I was a hospital administrator. Um, and I continued to work for as long as I can, for as long as I could. Um, I worked until nine months before the transplant. And the reason that I stopped working was because I collapsed and I started to hemorrhage internally uh, because my liver was so bad. It just was not working. And I finally was approved for the liver transplant, but my insurance company said, well, you waited so long that now you're too sick and you can't do the transplant. Um, and that happens. It happens all the time. People are removed from the list because they have to wait so long. In fact, 22 people die every single day waiting for a transplant. And those are not just older people. Those are children. Those are people of all ages. Thanks to my friends who really rallied around me and called the media and talked to everyone that we knew, we got the insurance company to reverse their decision and I was able to get my liver transplant. And because of that life-saving liver transplant, I have lived 18 years that I would never have had. Sometimes I think about it and I say, wow, I would have been dead 18 years already. I would never have met my grandchildren I would never have seen my children graduate from high school or college or get married. I would have really missed on a lot of my life. Now, my organ came from a woman who was a school teacher in Albany, and she um, was killed in a motor vehicle accident. But luckily, she had registered to be an organ donor, and she um, donated all of her organs, and I was a lucky recipient of the liver. And I think about her every single day of my life. Every morning when I wake up, I say, thank you, God, for another day. And I think about that woman who made that wonderful sacrifice and saved eight lives that day. And so what I do now is I promote organ donation because I feel like I cannot pay her back for her life-saving gift, but I can certainly pay her gift forward. And I can promote organ donation and tell people that this is not something that happens to somebody else. This can happen to you, and it can happen to a family member. It can happen to your friends. This happens. Um, the need for organ donations is tremendous, and it grows all the time. It grows every single day. As of today, there are 121,000 people waiting for life-saving transplants. 22 of those people will die today. 10 people will be added to that waiting list. Um, and it just goes on and on and on. So please, I implore you, when you register to become a voter, or if you want, on the leaflet that I gave you in the back, there is a registration form. Register to become an organ donor. Thank you.
Post 10 a the Putnam County Veterans Affairs, the uh, Putnam County Board of Elections, Social Security Administration, the Putnam County League of Women Voters, the Enoch Crosby Chapter of the National Society of Voters of the American Revolution, Janet McCaskey, and uh, from high school student uh, Samantha Altman, and for everybody's uh, work on this uh, day today, I want to just congratulate you and mention you, and thank you so much for your participation in the organization today. Thank you. Thank you. 